Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to episode number 43 of the Tombstone Tourist. Today, I'm at the Rosedale Cemetery in Martinsburg, West Virginia. We're going to be visiting the final resting place of a baseball Hall of Famer, the great Hack Wilson. Rosedale is a pretty large cemetery, but the grave of Hack Wilson is pretty easy to find. It's all the way in the back, near the big Y intersection. If you look off to the right, it's the largest monument in the section. Lewis Hack Wilson was born in Elwood City, Pennsylvania on April 26, 1900. He dropped out of school when he was 16 and took a job in a locomotive factory. A few years later, he moved to Martinsburg, West Virginia, began playing baseball with the Martinsburg Mountaineers. In 1923, he moved to Portsmouth, Virginia, played for the Portsmouth Truckers of the Virginia League. It was in Portsmouth that New York Giants manager John McGraw purchased his contract, and at the age of 23, Hack Wilson made his major league debut on September 29, 1923. Early on, it became obvious that Hack had a temper, and that would often put him at odds with his teammates. Throughout his career, he was a difficult teammate to say the least, and you would be hard pressed to find anyone who had anything good to say about him. There are a number of stories relating to how he got his nickname, Hack. Most are related to his small squad appearance. Some of his teammates even said he looked like a taxi cab hack, and the name stuck. Hack didn't enjoy great success with the Giants, and was eventually placed on waivers at the end of the 1925 season. Prior to the start of the 1926 season, the Chicago Cubs claimed him and he became the team's starting center fielder. It was with the Cubs that he would enjoy his greatest success. He enjoyed his most successful season in 1930 when he smashed the National League record of 54 home runs. That record would stand for 68 years until it was broken by Mark McGuire and Sammy Sosa in 1988. After the 1930 season, his terrible disposition was compounded by his love for strong drink. As his drinking increased, his career declined. For the next few years, he bounced from team to team, but finally retired in 1934. He ended his 11-year major league career with a batting average of 307, with 1,063 RBIs and 224 home runs. In retirement, Hack returned to Martinsburg where he operated a pool hall, but that soon failed. And for the next few years, he worked in bars in New York, Chicago, and Washington, D.C. His final job was as the manager of a city pool in Baltimore, Maryland. While living in Baltimore, Hack fell at his home. And while his injuries were thought at first to be not very serious, he developed several complications, including pneumonia. Hack Wilson died at the age of 48 on November 23rd, 1948. Hack Wilson, who was once the highest paid player in the National League, died destitute and penniless. Relatives refused to claim his remains, and finally National League President Ford Frick claimed his body and covered the cost of a funeral and burial. It was indeed a sad ending for one of the game's greatest players. This large granite stone was eventually placed here at his grave site. And after he was inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame by the Veterans Committee in 1979, a replica of his Hall of Fame plaque was fixed to the front of the monument. He played for New York, Chicago, the Brooklyn Dodgers, and Philadelphia, all in the National League but his Hall of Fame plaque looks like it has the hat of the Chicago Cubs.
Somebody's left a painting of the Wrigley Field sign for the 191 RBIs. This is where I'm going to end this video. If you've enjoyed my visit to Martinsburg, West Virginia, the final resting place of Baseball Hall of Famer, Hack Wilson, please be sure to give me a thumbs up below. And if you want to keep up with my future adventures, please be sure to ring that bell to subscribe. And if you're so inclined, leave me a comment. So, until next time, stay healthy, stay safe, and I'll see you down the road. So long, everyone.